Emergencies can strike at any time, whether you're at home, running errands, around town, or traveling. When they do occur, you should always be prepared with a dog first aid kit. The following list and guide will help you assemble your own kit. In addition to these items, be sure to include important paperwork, a copy of medical records, vaccination records, and emergency phone numbers. Dogs are inquisitive creatures and have no concept of danger. They are always chewing on things they shouldn't be, getting into unsafe situations or accessing places that are not safe for them to explore. Sometimes their curiosity leads to an emergency. Every day, pets at home eat toxic food or chemicals, injure themselves on something sharp, choke on something, or run across a road to be hit by a car. It is vital they receive prompt and appropriate first aid in any of those eventualities. Surprisingly, few owners and pet carers are up to speed with pet first aid. Unfortunately, it is unlikely that the vet is available to help quick enough in these urgent situations. Therefore, it is vital to have the proper knowledge and skills to react in these situations. Prompt and appropriate first aid can prevent a minor injury becoming a major one. It can reduce pain, improve outcomes, and give you peace of mind that you can do the best for your pet. There are many emergencies that may arise at home or out on a walk involving our pets. In those moments, it is important to be fully prepared in order to act quickly and effectively, saving your pet's life. For many people, their dog truly is their best friend. So, should their canine companion need medical help, having the security of having completed a dog first aid course can prove to be invaluable. Now, let's take a look at the top eight things to know about dog first aid. At number one, we have learning first aid. First aid for pets runs both online and practical courses that cover all the key aspects of dog first aid. For example, how to care for an unconscious dog to commonly occurring injuries and illnesses, such as choking, bleeding, fitting, poisoning, and much more. The practical courses are run in small groups with hands-on experience using a specially designed dog mannequin and numerous other practical training aids. Many pet parents benefit immensely from the courses, but they aren't just for dog owners. First aid courses are invaluable differentiator for those working in the industry as dog walkers or groomers as they can be a great way to demonstrate your knowledge and skills in dog first aid to enhance your authority and encourage new and potential clients to feel confident trusting their pets to your care. You should always keep a basic few items on hand for emergencies such as cotton bandages, cotton, wool, or lint to clean wounds, mild pet friendly antiseptic to wash wounds, and a pair of tweezers for removing stings or objects from the mouth. At number two, we have recognizing an emergency. If you are worried, always call your vet for advice. A key point for first aid is learning to recognize an emergency. Here are some emergency situations where you should definitely take your dog to the vet if they aren't breathing or having difficulty breathing, are unresponsive, have collapsed and can't get up, are having a fit or seizure, may have broken bones, are having difficulty moving or coordinating movements, may have eaten something toxic, or have been vomiting or passing diarrhea for the past 24 hours. At number three, we have knowing your dog. Changes in behavior such as change in appetite, bowel movements, and even smell can indicate that there is something seriously wrong with your pet. Know the key indicators to look out for so that you can act quickly. Remember to handle your injured or sick dog gently and carefully. Even the gentlest dog may bite when scared or in pain. Keep your face away from the mouth and resist the urge to hug your dog to comfort him, as this may scare him more or worsen his injuries. Use a calm, soothing voice to reassure your dog and if possible, pet him in an area away from the injury. If you need to transport him and his wounds are painful, you should place a muzzle on. Either have one handy in your first aid kit or make one out of a roll of gauze. If your dog is small, wrap him in a blanket or towel and carry him. Larger dogs can be transported on makeshift stretchers such as a board, a sled, or toboggan, or even a large blanket to make a hammock style sling. Keep a list of important dog first aid phone numbers 
handy in case of an emergency. These numbers should include your regular veterinarian, the local animal emergency clinic, and the number of the ASPCA Animal Poison Control Center, which is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and can be reached at 888-426-4435. Get a decal for your window in the event an emergency occurs while you are not at home. This decal will allow rescue personnel to know you have pets inside that may need attention. At number four, we have knowing how to check for a pulse. The easiest place to find the dog's pulse is in the upper third of their thigh. Place your hand over the top of their thigh and gently squeeze your fingers just underneath their leg you should be able to feel the artery pulsing at this point. Your thumb has a strong pulse itself, so don't use this to take their pulse. Otherwise, you'll be timing your own pulse rate. Time the pulse for 15 seconds, and then multiply the result by four in order to calculate the number of beats per minute. At number five, we have knowing how to help your choking dog. Choking occurs when something blocks the airway. When the airway is partially blocked, a dog might start retching, pacing back and forth, and pawing at their mouth. If their airway becomes totally blocked, they will be unable to make any sound at all. Dogs can choke on anything, from balls, socks, toys, or anything they can get a hold of. If it goes down the wrong way, it may leave them unable to breathe. It is important that you spot these signs and then know how to act fast to dislodge the object. Whether the item is dislodged or not, it is essential that the animal is thoroughly checked by a vet, as there may be damage to the inside of the mouth or throat once the object is removed, or damage to their ribs or internal organs if you have attempted an abdominal thrust. Trauma to the inside of the mouth or throat can take many days to heal and can also make it hard or painful for the dog to eat their regular food. Making the normal diet soft by running it through the blender with warm water may help. Your vet may dispense pain relief to help during the recovery period. Please learn dog first aid in advance of an emergency situation. Do not rely on Google to direct you to the most appropriate and correct advice in an emergency situation. At number six, we have know how to administer CPR. If your dog has stopped breathing, call a vet straight away. You may need to perform CPR to increase your dog's chances of survival. Consider taking a class in dog first aid and learn animal CPR. Classes are readily available online and through community educational centers, libraries, pet stores, and sometimes even your local veterinarian. We hope you'll never need this advice, but it's best to be prepared just in case. At number seven, we have know how to muzzle your pet. Even the gentlest of dogs is likely to bite if it is frightened or in pain so you should know how to make a makeshift muzzle for them as it will make it easier for you to safely help them. You should never muzzle an animal that is overheated, that is having difficulty breathing, or is likely to vomit. Always have access to scissors to ensure you are able to swiftly release the muzzle should you need to do so. Never muzzle an animal that is having difficulty breathing, has a raised body temperature, or is at risk of vomiting. Observe caution it is still possible for an animal to bite even when muzzled. Be ready to release the muzzle if necessary. Do not put yourself at risk. If you're in danger of being bitten and are not confident using an improvised muzzle, phone the vet and seek further advice. Finally, at number eight, we have being prepared for emergencies could save your pet's life. Keep your vet's name, address, and telephone number stored in your mobile phone, your landline, and kept in an address book or safe place around the home. Call your vet first. You'll need to let them know there's an emergency case on the way and follow any instructions you're given. For example, if emergencies are seen on a different site, keep a pen and paper handy to take down any important instructions from your vet. Always carry a pet first aid kit with you in case your pet needs your help. Always be prepared. Make a dog first aid kit and have it on hand wherever you go. Consider having multiple kits, such as a large fully stocked kit for home and a smaller kit for the car or family outings. Hopefully your dog will never seriously hurt himself, but having high energy levels, he's bound to get into a few scrapes now and then. 
so it's useful to have knowledge of basic first aid. Always remember that any first aid administered to your pet should be followed by immediate veterinary care. First aid care is not a substitute for veterinary care, but it may save your pet's life until it receives veterinary treatment. Thanks so much for watching y'all. Don't forget to subscribe to see our next video about the animals we love best.